Good morning. This is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tenhaken has lost patience with a Florida-based property management company featured in a Kelloland Investigate story two years ago. He says the city continues to receive complaints against Zadik Management, which has about 2,000 apartments in Sioux Falls. The mayor met with a company representative in person and had hoped conditions at the apartments would improve, but it doesn't appear they have. The city consistently receives complaints about cockroaches, trash, ice-covered sidewalks, and security issues. My office specifically is, is kind of fed up with all the complaints coming to me, and so we need to hold people accountable. And when you're, when you're a property owner and you decide to invest in multifamily properties, especially workforce and lower income properties, there's an expectation that comes with that. The mayor says renters should contact their property manager with complaints first. If they are not addressed, then they should contact the city. The city in turn will investigate the issues and levy fines against the company if applicable. You can find the number of the code enforcement department with this story right here on Kelloland.com. An airman who was stationed at Ellsworth Air Force Base is headed to federal prison for enticing a teenage girl over the Internet. A judge sentenced Joshua Kaler to 10 years behind bars. The investigation goes back to 2021. That's when a victim told authorities Kaler had been sending her sexually explicit messages and pictures since she was 15 years old. During the investigation, another victim said she also received explicit messages. Officials say they found pictures of both victims on Kaler's cell phones. New court papers lay out what led up to a deadly crash in Mission nearly two years ago. Daniel Menard was riding in the back of a minivan that was rear-ended by a semi in February 2022. Menard died of a traumatic brain injury. The driver of the semi, Conrad Jones, has signed a document admitting to speeding when it happened. Investigators say he did not hit the brakes until moments before the collision. Jones is scheduled to plead guilty to involuntary manslaughter. He faces a maximum of eight years behind bars. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Another gray start to the day, Scott. Yeah, probably another gray finish, too, across eastern Kettle Land. Cloudy skies, areas of fog again this morning. Thick fog in central South Dakota. Temperatures today in the 30s for highs. 40s in western Kettle Land with sunshine. We'll try to bring back that sunshine as we go through the day tomorrow in eastern Kettle Land. And next week is still looking warmer. Details ahead with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Thank you, Scott. Well, snow plows keep our streets and highways clear of snow, but did you ever stop to think about railroad tracks? Who keeps those clear? Well, the rail lines do. The Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway uses several pieces of equipment to plow their tracks clear of snow, like a rotary plow. It's 11 feet in diameter and can cut through deep snow drifts. It's quite a sight to see. I've been doing this for 29 years and I still enjoy going out on the road and watching that happen. Um, a lot of snow gets moved in a short period of time and uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a view to see, absolutely. With smaller drifts, BNSF uses a regular plow on the front end of a main engine to plow the tracks. The International Racquetball Tour has made its return to Sioux Falls as part of the Lewis Drug Pro-Am. The tournament kicked off Thursday afternoon at the downtown YMCA. The event features the majority of the top-ranked players in the world. Amateurs from throughout the region will join the mix today. We have them kind of running all over town, and we squeeze them in down here at the YMCA uh, whenever we can. Racquetball, it's me and my opponent, or in the case of doubles, me and three other people that are playing. And everything that happens in that court, for the most part, I'm responsible for, good and bad. The tournament continues this morning and runs through the weekend. The Pro Singles Championship is Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, followed by the doubles final. Gibb shares his thoughts on one of the pros making his long-awaited return to Sioux Falls with this story right here on Kelloland.com. Well, this isn't a sight you see every day in Sioux Falls. A viewer sent us this video of a herd of 10 horses trotting through a neighborhood near Harvey Dunn Elementary last night. The horses have been rounded up and returned to their owner. No one was hurt.
Well, that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? Okay, well, getting into our weather forecast, we're going to be expecting more of the same. We've got those clouds around, those temperatures in the 30s. We're kind of used to this. Uh, yeah, it's the same old, same old. But oh, things are going to start changing. Let's look at the weekend. Okay, so we'll finish out today. We will see upper 40s, Rapid City. We may touch 50 in a couple of locations there. Have a look at tonight as the clouds, yeah, they're still here. Maybe some fog, can, we can certainly include that. But tomorrow, the forecast on Saturday, we notice a couple of things here. Our low-level moisture factor is beginning to erode a little bit, and that's in conjunction with a northwesterly wind. So you have to kind of piece those things together, and that's one opportunity here that we see for less clouds tomorrow. Okay, we'll go with that trend for now. On Sunday, we can still say, yeah, probably some of those same talking points. And next week also, uh, there will be more opportunities for some sun, not to guarantee that all week, but uh, at least with the wind changing out of the northwest, it's going to start to to mix up the weather pattern. All in all, it's still well above normal. You know that. We've been talking about this now for several days. What we will be watching, though, a couple of small things. Early next week, there's a small disturbance there across Wisconsin and Minnesota. That may end up being a, a little bit of an, a talker there because it might kick up our wind. Actually, that might help us warm, believe it or not, uh, because our source region of the warmer weather is going to come in from Montana and from the northwest. We're still going to get into a longer stretch of a snow melt pattern. That is pretty obvious as we turn the calendar over to early February. And then once we get to that point, the next talking issue, and we've brought this up several times, there are going to be some areas of more active weather across the west. Eventually that will unpack. We'll let that kind of simmer on the back burner for now. But uh, the month of February is going to have some interesting twists and turns. So I know we've been kind of holding steady, kind of just a, a lull in the weather, or it's been just sort of steady as she goes. But we will get those turnarounds. And once we get into next week's 40-degree weather in Sioux Falls, it's going to feel pretty nice. It's going to feel like March weather, isn't it? And uh, overnight lows will stay above average all through that seven-day forecast. you got to remember, normal low now in Sioux Falls is around 8 degrees. Aberdeen in the northeast, same thing, 40s are back. Uh, we start melting snow, and I think we'll build that momentum. And uh, as long as we don't get into any major fog issues, that's one thing we always kind of carry around as a, uh, something to watch. But other than that, it appears most of the days will be well above normal for both Pier and Rapid. And Rapid City, without that snow cover, 60-degree weather is pretty likely starting Sunday. Check out the rest of the details. They're online at kettleland.com.